Hello and welcome to this Cali Fundamentals lesson. I'm your host Robert Smith and I'm excited to be here with you today. So you may be wondering, when are we going to get started? We've talked about downloading, we've talked about some history behind Cali, we've talked about all these different things. So when am I going to start learning how to actually use Cali? Well, the good news is Today's lesson involves getting around with the terminal, and we're going to start inching our way into Kali Linux, the environment, the file systems, things of that nature, and it all starts here. So today's lesson objectives are pretty straightforward. I want you to walk away with a few navigation commands, a basic understanding of, of how to use the terminal, how to get around, how to view files, and things of that nature. We're not going to get into anything too technical, but I'm going to give you some tools so that you can start you know, kicking the tires and really understanding you know, what's there and, and how to get through everything. So what I'm going to do is pull up my lab environment. Now, this is the Kali uh, system in the host data integrity baselining lab. So if you have access to that lab, you can pull this up and follow along with me. Or if you've already installed a copy of Kali, you can go from there as well. And, you know, again, there's some differences, like there might be the terminal button that's up here um, in this version would maybe be over here on the side in the version that you've previously downloaded. So with those things in mind, let's go ahead and jump into looking at the terminal. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. When you click the terminal button, you get a terminal. Now, what you may be wondering is that's all fine and, and nice, but where do I begin? How do I understand how to use this? Well, quite simply, one step at a time, right? So when you first open a terminal, the thing I like to do is what's called Print Working Directory, or PWD. What that does for me is it's going to show me my current directory and where I'm at. Uh, with respect to the file system and things of that nature. So typically this is where you'll start off unless you were doing something else. And you may be wondering, well that's neat, but I'm used to a GUI. I can usually see what's in that directory. So how do I know what's there now? Well, if you use the list command, or ls for short, you'll notice that I have desktop, which is the desktop folder. And that's neat as well, right? So with these two commands, you can really understand where you're at within the file system or within this current terminal session, and you can get a listing of everything that's kind of in that current directory that you're working within. So that's pretty easy, pretty simple. Now, let's say that you need to go back a directory or you need to go back uh, a level here. So the command change uh, directory or CD here, you can do that with two dots. And now you notice that there's a slight change here. When I hit LS or PWD first so that we stay on track with that, you'll notice that I don't have anything there. It's just blank. But when I do LS, list, we get a whole different set of directories here. Now you'll notice there's root. that We were just in there, right? So we went back one, and now we're in a directory that is again the kind of root of, of the whole system here so now if I need to get into any of these other areas you might be wondering well I, I didn't mean to go here or I need to go back into root how do I do that well with that same command we can type root instead of the two dots and now we're back in the root folder so as you start working through and you start you know navigating you can go to different areas so let's do it kind of quick here so CD and the two dots we're back in that folder again or that directory we then do LS and now we can see something else let's say I want to go into the Etsy folder or the ETC folder I just do the same thing CD ETC and PWD and now we're working out of that particular area LS and there's a lot more here we're moving a little fast on that, but again, it's just some basic navigation commands. So print working directory shows us where we're at. LS shows us the content of that particular directory. CD allows us to move through or back to certain areas. And just say that I'm ready to get back to the root folder that I was originally in. I can just type CD and hit enter. And suddenly I'm back where I started. Very nice. So we've entered all of these different things and we've gotten all this different output and we're starting to get a bit of a mess here. So the next thing that I, I would like to show you is called clear. So when I type clear and hit enter, it gets rid of all that mess and now I've got a nice clean starting point. So we were talking earlier about the different directories and whatnot and in your root directory you have the desktop. So 
If you want to, you can hit CD, type desktop, and bam, we're there. Now, keep in mind that if you want to quickly finish the name of something, or maybe you're having some confusion on remembering, like let's say that I'm back in that folder or that directory, and I want to maybe get to desktop or something like that. Now, check this out. If I do CD, desktop, and hit tab, notice that it doesn't go anywhere. It's not giving me that completion. But when I do again and hit tab, it finishes. Why is that? Well, keep in mind with Linux and, and Kali and any of the distributions, really, they're case sensitive. So if you type a lowercase letter, but the directory or command or whatever the case may be starts with a capital letter, it's not going to autocomplete or execute accordingly. So keep in mind that, that everything here is going to be case sensitive and you'll want to be mindful of that as you're working. So now we're in our desktop directory, and, and that's great. So when I do my ls again, oh, wow, you'll notice that the stuff that we have over here is now showing up in here, minus the computer icon that we have over here. But we've got our uh, read.txt file here. We've got this make.txt that's not showing up. So now that we're here, Let's say I want to be able to see what's in that TXT file without opening. I mean, yeah, you can double click and it opens. Great, you can see it. But if we're working through and, and we're not navigating via the GUI and I want to read what's in that text file, I can do what's called cat. Uh, it's short for concatenate. And I can do that read.txt. I just use tab there to autocomplete. And look, it shows the text that's in the file. So this is a quick way that you can read that uh, content of that file and see what's in it. Now, let's say that I want to get rid of that weird make.txt. Well, I can use the, move, uh, the remove command, and then I can start typing the name of that, and suddenly that, that completes. There's no error there, so we do ls again. And as you'll notice, make.txt is no longer here. So that rm allowed me to remove that make.txt uh, folder, or I'm sorry, text file. All right, so now let's say that I want to um, go ahead and make another text file or something like that. So you can also do cat, which allowed us to read, and I can do a quick uh, kind of caret here, and it will output to a text uh, or a text file. And so in this case, what I can do is I can do test.txt and suddenly that creates a text file pretty quick on the desktop there. So now I'm going to hit control C just to back out and now I have an empty text file here. So that's pretty neat stuff. That's a quick way to create a text file, quick way to read a text file, quick way to remove one. Let's say now that I want to make a folder or a directory on the desktop. So in this case what I can do is mkdir or make directory and then I can do, let's just say I want to call it um, test directory. Suddenly, I've got a folder over here on the desktop named test. So now, when I look, you'll see that test shows up here in blue. Now, we'll talk about these colors and all those things in the next lesson, so don't get hung up on the color just yet. We'll explain all of that here soon. Now, let's say that I want to move my test.txt to the uh, test folder that I just created. So what I can do is I can type mv for move that test.txt and then I'm going to move it to test. Suddenly it disappears, right? No longer there. Now if I do my cd to test ls for list, suddenly there it is. So Pretty neat stuff. I mean, not not a lot to it once we get some of those basic commands down and we're able to, um, you know, kind of cleanly navigate and make a few files and do some things. You're really ready to jump in and start working. So good job on that stuff. So you might be wondering, wow, you did a, a lot. How do I know what I've done this far? How do I know what steps I've taken? What if I want to see some things that I did earlier but I can't remember? Well, you can use the history command. And that cleanly lists out everything that we've done in this terminal session here. And then from there, let's say we're done, and we can hit exit, and it closes the terminal. So with that in mind, 
Start doing some navigation. Start working through the terminal on your own and practicing some of those commands. And before you know it, you'll be an expert. Now, let's do a quick check on learning. You didn't think you were getting away without one of those, did you? So what command allows you to move a file from one directory to another? Well, with these in mind, you may be thinking, well, MV, move, makes sense, right? That would be correct. Keep in mind that RM was to remove files or content. MKDIR, or make directory, was to make a folder or a directory. LS was to list. And move was to move files from one directory to another. So in summary, you should have gotten a very high level understanding on how to navigate through Kali's directories, how to create and manipulate some files at a high level, and really how much fun you're going to have doing this stuff and working through the Kali distribution or any distribution of Linux, to, to be honest, uh, and learning these commands. So great job. Thank you for your time today, and I look forward to seeing you again here soon.